All right, guys, well, you've got DJ Squibby here with another session of Frag Fantastic Retro Arcade Gaming. And today I need a little bit of game therapy. Because um, every time I turn the telly on, all I ever see is, have you got PPI? Um, adverts for Help a Snow Leopard, Help a Donkey, um, Funeral Insurance, uh, and I've had enough of Brexit. All right, so let's get away from that and dive into fantasy. All right, so, so what we're gonna do, we're doing a little bit of specky, and what we're gonna be doing is, first of all, Fruit Machine Simulator 2 by Codemasters. I believe rightly, this is from 1989. Just going to do a little screen load up, you know, just so you can see what what we had to go through when we were kids. You know, some of these games. I mean, was it 48k? Um, 48k games were sort of like three, four minutes to load. Uh, and then if they were one to 8k, you know, they could be like 12, 15 minutes to load. And then you'd get all the way through, waited, and then it'd crash because we're talking about it was all cassettes. And basically, this is all stemmed from um, Sega Zombie, a mate of mine I watch on YouTube, he's got his own channel, um, and he's doing a thing with Spectrum and, and all that sort of wicked stuff. And he said, like anyone else uh, wants to upload a video, Spectrum, you know, let's get some more videos out there. So that's what we're doing. So, and this was a game that I played a lot with my mates, because as I said, you could play up to four players and there was multiple screens, now not just the stack screen but the reels, there was other winning screens like you can see. Um, so without further ado, let's get on with this. Now it's all on the keyboard. All right, so, um, so as I say, four players, it's either one, two, three or four on the keypad. So for this, I'm just gonna do four players. Okay, and then each player gets one pound ten to spend. Again, it is a hundred pound jackpot, what's pretty cool. Um, so, a pound is zero on the keypad. And we've got two tokens, that's T. You don't have to put all your money in, but let's just do it. So, and 10p is one. Okay, and then enter to start. So, and then start is the space bar. Right, so we've got bananas. Now there's two ways of playing these games if you don't know. Um, the Mega Trek lights up. As you can see, MEG is lit up because we've got a number three on the banana. All right, now what you want is the track held. So where Mega is, there's like, you can see that little red box. Uh, if that lights up, then, then that mega track will be held. So any numbers will spin in, that will get you to the next screen where you can win other other items, other other money. So you can you can either play it for just matching the fruits, or you can play it for the, for the numbers, or both. It depends how you want to do it. So because we haven't got the the track held, we're just going to hold the hold the bananas. But it's also holding the free. Okay, so we've got to hit it when it goes on the 50p, like that, and that's the enter. Now you don't get long to do this. Now we want to keep advancing, so you push enter to hit the Y for continue. If you want to collect that item, you hit uh, the enter uh, on N for no. Now what's happened is we've got a free spin, so it don't cost you nothing. Now, we want numbers to come in because the numbers will advance us up that track on the other screen. So hit space, doesn't cost nothing. Right, so there's a two, a one and a three. So, so that will take us up. Right, I'm gonna continue. I don't wanna collect that, so we get a free spin. Right, we've got two more numbers. Keep going. Now if you don't, 
Right, I've got 50p box. And there's a pound there. Now, if I wanted to, I could stake the coins. That's obviously gambling them. So that is S. Um, but what I'm going to do for this, I'm going to I'm going to take the take the win. So take the win is enter. If you want to gamble it, it's space. It's just it says on the screen anyway. So so we're going to you right. So we've won a pound. All right. Um, on the on this screen we've got nudges. So you've got a nudge bank. Now that is at four at the minute that goes up um, and then you've got the pound bank the 50 bank the 20 and the 10 um, right so let's carry on now the 100 pound jackpot is the pound signs but you don't win 100 pound if that spins in you then go to another screen and you've got to hit the button at the right time and it lights up and you could win 100 quid <laughs> So we've not got the track held, but Mega Treks lit. Now, at this stage, you can either hold the cherries and hope another one spins in, uh, or you can hold all three reels and hope that you get uh, a feature held. So I'm gonna hold all the reels and let it spin. Right, no feature, but I'm gonna keep doing this. Okay, didn't get nothing. Nothing, so keep going. And if you do play four players on this, or more than one player, um, you can basically go for high scores. So your high score is how much money you've won, or how much money you've got left in the bank. Um, and at the end of your turn, you can actually, um, you can walk away with the money. And then that's your high score, and you put the score in, and. Right, so let's hold grapes. Nothing there. So guys, I've got to keep an eye on the time because I've got I've got loads to do today. Right, let's hold the bananas. So I'm going to hold real one and hope that spins in. It doesn't often, but okay, let's hold it again just for a laugh. Right, so hold the pounds. Fingers crossed. <laughs> okay, so we've right. So at this stage, I've put I've had my 15 turns but I won a pound. Now, if I wanted to continue, I would put, uh, it says insert more coins up to five credits. So I could put 50p in, still have 50 in the bank, and then it go to player two, but I'm gonna carry on to player two. So you push enter, and that goes to player two. And then it's saying insert coins. So here we go. So pound is zero, tokens is T, and 10p is one. And then enter the start. Right, okay, so we rolled the pounds. Hold them again. Oh yeah, by the way, if you hold the wrong reel, um, and you, you, you think, oh no, I've made a mess up. You can push C on the keyboard and that cancel. And then you can re-choose your reels. So off we go again. I'm gonna keep holding them. I know we're, we're using up credits, but it's not real money, is it? Right, so this bit you've got to light up Mega Trek, but it doesn't seem to do a lot. I think this just builds up the, the, the bank, you know, where the pound, the 50, the 20, or your nudges, I think that's how that works. If anyone knows different, let us know. Right, okay, 
so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to hold all three wheels because there's a number on each one and we might get the track held. Right, so we've got the track held. So we've got uh, four. One, two, three, four. So we'd need what? Uh, it'd have to hold again. So let's just hold them all. We go. Hope it holds. Yeah, if we didn't get the mega track, so I'm still going to hold them. Yeah, we'll just hold the two and let it go. Okay. Right, so it's lighting up to 50. You've got to push it at the right time. You don't get long while you're doing this. On these screens, you've got to be decisive and act quick. So again, we get a free spin. It doesn't cost us anything, but we want numbers to spin in. And then that would advance us on the next level. We've got a two, two and a three, lovely. Right, let's keep going. What have I got? Shuffle nudge. We'll keep going. And then enter. Alright, we'll keep going. So again we want numbers. Right, I'm gonna gamble this. Uh, what is it? Gamble this space. Right, we lost. So I'm gonna take the the win and it should give us hyper nudge. Now there's only four nudges in the bank but now you have to hit space to shuffle the reels. Max win 80p. Now the chances are, what is that, that's probably going to be three cherries I would imagine. Now again you can actually stake uh, the nudges if you want. So I'm going to gamble. So S, let's gamble. Let's gamble two and then hit space. Right, now we lost them. So now we can only get 40 people. I'm going to stake them all. Right, so we've won <laughs> two back. So I'm going to take the win. Enter. Yeah, it was cherries. And then you can gamble it if you want, or collect. So let's have a little gamble, so space. Now if we lose, it goes to 30p. Right, oh, we're gonna lose. No, we're not. <laughs> so from a pound, uh, it, we've won 50, 50p. So again, that goes up in player two's bank. And again, so I play this quite a bit, this game, because it's one of the games you can, you can sit back on the set here, you haven't got to be, you know, sitting up close to the screen, I'm just closer for recording. Um, and my sun comes down sometimes, oh, here we go. So it's lighting up 50, you've got to hit it on the 50, we've got it. Right, we want to repeat, so we push, when it hits the, the Y, so we get a free spin, again it don't cost nothing this bit, oh, we got numbers straight away. Right now we do not want to get anything to do with nudges on that next screen because there's only one nudge in the bank. So we're going to hold the free because that will advance us and then we want numbers to come in. Right, we're going to continue with that. So. Free spin. Numbers, numbers. Yeah. Right. We've got treble through, or if we gamble it, we could get 50p box. But it's only 50p in there, or we could lose. Uh, I'm, I'm going to. Uh, where is it? So let's just take that. Right, so we've got treble through. So hit the space. Oh my god, fiver. Right now, if I gamble it, I could go into the jackpot, but I guarantee you, you always lose. But for this purpose, I'm, I am going to gamble. 
Okay, we'll take that. <laughs> so we just lost four quid and ended up with a pound. Now what we want is, uh, it'd be nice if we'd have got a repeat because we'd have won a fiver again. Yeah, as I said, a boy's been watching me. Every now and again, I load up this and have we have a go, either go on the spec in, whatever. Um, and it is emulation, do you know what I mean? It's, it's just how it is. I did used to have a specy back in the day, 128. Uh, but my boy comes down and he sees this. He says, God, that looks rubbish, Dad. You know, why are you playing? <laughs> and I said, well, when, when I was a kid, that's what we had. There was nothing better than this, you know. Uh, you know, there was no, and this was all on cassettes. It loaded on a cassette tape, not a CD or a cartridge. This was, this was proper old school. But he says, "Why are you messing about with it?" And I said, "Because it brings back memories and having, you know, times when more innocent times. You know what I mean?" Right, so I've run out of credit, so right, let's go to, um, so I've, I've, I've got 150 in the bank, let's go to player three, so push enter. Right, put some money in, so. Is that it? Right, so 15 goes and enter to start. Right, we are the bananas. But back in the day, I used to, because I live quite near the seafront, and I was spoilt for choice with uh, arcades. Um, but back in the day, you know, you had all the excellent games, you know, all the Space Invaders and Tron and Defender. And there's all, always been cash fruit machines and stuff, you know. But I used to go down and have a dabble and, you know, you sort of learn how to play some of them. But there's only one winner, and that's the bookie or the machine, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I think we're coming up to... So I want to try and show you a few games if I can, not just this one game. I know this has been a... This is the sort of game where you can't do it in a couple of minutes. Right, let's keep holding the bars. But there is other ways of winning, so... You can get like a skill climb where you have to push the button at the right time and it lights up skill and it advances so much money. Uh, right, let's just let it all spin. There's one thing I learnt with these fruit machines. It doesn't matter what you push and hold or you know, the machine's only going to pay you what it wants to pay you at the time it wants to pay you. So, it, it, it's just a distraction pushing and holding things. Because if you're not, if the, the software, because it is a computer, especially you know, the ones in the arcades, if the program's not ready to pay out because it's not taking enough money, it doesn't matter what you push and do. <laughs> I mean, there is little simple ways of winning, but uh, you obviously you know the machine, but. And in the arcades at the time, you know, you, if you got the jackpot, it paid it in tokens. And because the tokens you could only spend in that arcade, obviously you could spend them on, on other game, you know, other games within that arcade, but you couldn't, spend them in any other arcade. Uh, so when you won tokens, you spent your tokens first, obviously, and you didn't put them back in that machine, you went to another machine, because you wouldn't win nothing from that machine you just won from. Okay, so I think we're gonna call this Okay, so you're broke, you're out of the game. Now, obviously player four was at his turn, but you could keep going, 
player four insert coins. Again, if you've had enough, you can actually push, I think it's walk away. I know you can't, you have to, you have to, uh, what is it? So you'd have to put some money in, but anyway, so that's this bit over. I'm gonna try and do a few more games, um, but I just wanted to show you this. So I was, I was telling uh, Sega Zombie about uh, the fruit machine games that I've got um, and he said he remembered one from the, from back in the day. He couldn't remember its name. Um, but so there is a few, quite a few uh, fruit machines, but so there is, some of them are absolute diabolical, they're rubbish, but so this one is pretty cool. Anyway, on with the next one. Okay, so on to the next game. And this is probably my ultimate favorite game and it's Jetpack. Um, brilliant little game and this was like 48, I think this was released, I think it was at 16K, 48K. It was one of the very early games. Um, and this game, uh, I, I had it on the VIC-20, the, the, the VIC-20, the Commodore VIC-20. That was what I had when I was a kid and what an awesome machine. But all my mates had the Speccy. Uh, and so I used to go around my mates and this was one of the games that my mate had and wow, we just used to spend hours on it and it's a simple little game but it's from Ultimate uh, look at that, awesome and you know, we were blown away when these screens used to load in because you know, there was nothing like it around you didn't have all the gadgets and gizmos and internet and all that wonderful stuff you just add this um, and you know we used to spend hours on this game as well as others um, but <laughs> I even used to we even used to bunk off school uh, and go around his house and play this and it was good because you know you know everybody would play this even me mates family that we'd all get involved and play this because what you got to remember there was there was arcades and then there was like the home computers and there was nothing in between it wasn't it was just so cool anyway right so right there's the old uh, layout of the screen um, and it's so basic I mean look 1983 uh, it, and it was just all you needed to get started right so there we go so jetpack that's the, the start up screen uh, and it's so basic this is such a basic game but when you look back at it even it's still good now um, such a cool game so uh, we've got Kempton joystick on playing it on a 360 pad wireless pad um, you could do the keyboard if you want, but we we used to play on the joystick. So let's start the game. So it's number five. Right. So if anyone's uh, just come to this planet <laughs> and they don't know anything about this game, basically you're a little spaceman with a jetpack and a laser, and you've got to build the ship. I've built, put the second bit on, so. All right. So you start off by building the ship, and then you've got to fuel it. So take the fuel. You can run into the ship if you want, and then you get these bonuses you can collect. Now what I used to do is just stay at the top as much as I could. But now, we are talking about when games were sort of in their infancy, you know what I mean? You didn't, but to see a little jet man. <clears throat> oh, and when you push thrust, look, a little thrust comes out, a puff of smoke. But seeing that when I was a kid, it was like, oh my God. I mean, I was, I've always been into space and robots and ghoul knows fantasy, whatever. So we've got to go 
down and get it. Now we can walk straight in if we want to. And that's it, you fueled the ship, you built the ship, you fueled it, and then off you go to the next level. But so I had this on, I actually had this on the VIG-20. Uh, at the time my mates had it on the Speccy. And to be honest with you, it, I don't think there was any difference to be, to be fair. Right, so now we get these. Oh, I'll keep that. Right. Right, I don't know what I flew up there, but there you go, the fuel's down the bottom. Right, so running quick, get up as quick as we can, go and get the fuel. But what I used to like doing is hopping across and using the jet and so that's not good it's gone down there but we'll just hopefully won't die straight up get the fuel and it's funny these little jet packs with a laser gun it always remind me of um, James Bond you know Moonraker what is uh, another one of my favourite films I just I love James Bond I mean, it's brilliant and being that it's in outer space, well that was, <laughs> that ticked all the boxes for me when I was a kid. Well, let's get in the ship quick. Now after a, a little while, you then have to build another ship. I think there's the second ship is a, like a space shuttle. So you have to build it again and then fuel it and And again, the aliens, or whatever you want to call them, have got like a different way of uh, flying about the screen and uh, trying to get hold of you. Now, obviously, when, when I was a kid, when you're learning to play this game, you're all over the screen and you die within seconds. You're better off staying up as high as you can or at least on one of the on one of those levels, you know. I'm sure there's different ways of playing this game, but this is how I used to play it. It, it, it is a bit boring, <laughs> but it, it's it's fun. And what I liked about it is if you pull down on the joystick, I nearly got killed. Then if you pull down on the joystick, you can hover. You'll get the bonus, whatever that is. And you do get extra men uh, at various points in the game. I've got to keep an eye on this time, because I've got to go out in a minute. Um, trying to squeeze video in at certain times of the day. Okay, so the ship is refueled. Get down quick. Let's sit into the ship. Sweaty hands. But this just really does bring back some good memories. Um, I mean, the games I'm playing at the minute. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm messing about with. Uh, I've got myself a. A racing simulator uh, or rig, whatever you want to call it. So it's steering wheel, foot pedals, gear shift, and a, a next level racing stand that it all bolts to. Uh, so I'm playing that a lot, as well as doing the retro stuff. Uh, but that's Project Cars 2 on the PC, and I'm thoroughly enjoying that. Um, I might even uh, include a video. Okay, so that's that. But um, yeah, the Project Cars 2 on the PC with the steering wheel and the foot pedals. Oh my God, it is just, it's out of this world. Again, when I was a kid going into the arcades, if there was a game with a steering wheel on it, it didn't matter if it was standing up, sitting down, 
that was me, you, you lost me. And I didn't even have to put any money in it, you know, as a, as a kid. You know, you just use your imagination. But let's face it, they were, all these games were 10p a go. And it got expensive after a while. And, you know, if you, if you went somewhere on holiday or whatever and your parents, they wouldn't keep giving you money. <laughs> Oh, I'm dead. But yeah, driving games, they're, they're just, that's me. Um, but yeah, so this wheel and pedal setup I've got, um, feel free to check out the channel. I've got some other racing videos. Um, not retro stuff, but it's game, it's still gaming, do you know what I mean? Simulation, gaming, whatever you want to call it. Just be greedy and get that lump of gold. Get in the shit. And do a bit of time. Right, there's the space shuttle. And believe it or not, this. Uh, run, run, run. These little UFOs are the little buggers. I right, see so they're all herding underneath me. So as soon as I move, they're going to be on my case. So, and then they're behind you. Because again, you can fly off the screen like I just did. I try not to fly off the screen too much because you end up getting killed. But yeah, me and my mates used to have my mate's family's dad in particular, we used to, we used to, have, a comp, we used to have competitions on this. But at the time, of, I think he had this. I mean, when this came out, what was it? Was this 80, 1983 or was it 82? I don't know if it was a, a release title. Um, but I, re oh. I mean, my memory's a bit cloudy back in them days, because, you know, I'm 50 next year, do you know what I mean? <laughs> it's a bit scary, isn't it? So my memory of uh, certain events is a bit clouded, but you know, but so at the time of playing this, what did we make out uh, Again, I can't remember what came first. Was it Jet Set, Willy Manic Miner? We had that. Um, and he even had the Hobbit, you know, the, a text adventure. Now this, these adventures, you had a, a static screen would load in, and then you typed everything in on the keyboard. And um, so games like that. What else did he have? Um, he had, you know, he had loads of games. But so his Spectrum at the time, it was the the little tiny specky with the rubber keys. So, and I believe it was the 16K model. Did he have the expansion pack, or, or I think he got expansion pack for his birthday, and that expanded it up to, I think then it would be 48k. Obviously, correct me if I'm wrong, but say, yeah, the little specky with the rubber keys, oh, brilliant. And it was, it was mad because at the time, so we got, I, we got the Vic 20 for Christmas, and it was shared between my brother, and my sister, and me. Um, you can imagine how much that cost. It, it, Mum and Dad got that with a little 14 inch colour portable, so we, that Christmas was pretty special, you know. But at the time, even though the Vic 20 was apparently a, a more powerful computer, it didn't have as many games uh, for the system. Whereas the Specky card did it, it had. It was hundreds of games eventually, you know, and in the end, probably thousands. Um, so I, I used to rock, rock on with my Big Twenty, and enjoy it, and loads of memories of it. Um, but secretly, I always wanted the Specky. <laughs> Not that I was ungrateful, because so the Big Twenty, wow, that was the first ever home computer we had, um, 
and we didn't have a lot of money at the time, so God knows how much that, that cost my mum and dad at Christmas. But later on, pardon me, later on I, uh, I bought a 128 Spectrum. The spec, he actually, the, the, its lifespan was quite long, and you've now got the people still making games for it, I believe. You know, only sort of like fan-based stuff. Do you know what I mean? But yeah, I bought a 128 uh, spec. It didn't have the built-in tape deck, but it was the black one with the heating sink on the right-hand side. Did people, did people call that a toast toast rack or something? <laughs> I don't know. But you know, I loved it to death, you know. Because um, at the time, you know, as I said, all the games were on cassette, and you're going to school, and um, and you do swapsies, you know what I mean? With your games and whatever. And, um, Being a kid, you didn't have a lot of money, and a lot of the games you, you couldn't afford. So you might have one or two games, and then the rest of them were on. Uh, let's just say they were borrowed. <laughs> right, so we're coming towards the end. Of, I have got to go. And I'm sure you're getting bored of me just rabbiting on and playing jetpack. But believe it or not, right, so mark the screen this way around, drop it there. I could play this pretty much all day, but I'm not going to because uh, I've got to go out in a mo. I might try and squeeze possibly one or one more game, maybe two. I don't know. I don't want this vid to be too long. Because I don't know about you, but when you... This has got to be edited. When you upload it to YouTube, uh, I try and put it on a, a setting what doesn't look too crappy, do you know what I mean? Uh, but say so half an hour, I, I think it's about half an hour footage uploaded to YouTube can take four or five hours to upload. Um, I know you don't have to have it in the best settings because we are talking about, you know, 8-bit games, whatever. But yeah, you can you can sort of get away with a lower lower setting when you're uh, up in these. Yeah, four or five hours for sort of a, a 30 minute video, that's that's a long time. <laughs> I think we're gonna, you know, I'm sex, sitting, talking to you and I could have gotten that shit ages ago. Oh well, so we've got another ship. So we've gone all the way around, we're back onto the meteorites, we've got to build the ship again. Okay, up there. And it's funny, like I said with my son, he says, Dad, why do you play these rubbish games? It looks it looks pants. What you got to remember is the kids now. I mean my son is um he's 13, so he's it's all PC, uh, Gary's mod, um, you know, them sort of games. He loves uh, his train simulators, driving trains and all that on his, on his computer. I mean, he's got loads of games that he's, he likes playing, but uh, what is it? Uh, oh. what's, the, what's the other game he likes playing? Um, Oh, Grand Theft Auto, them sort of things, you know. But yeah, I mean, seeing them sort of games compared to this, I mean, 
it, 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 <laughs> it is hard to explain to the, the, the younger generation about this stuff. I mean, I've, you know, my son's played a few games with us before, but they're normally sort of like Kairi Warriors, uh, you know, like, but he'll play it on, on main with us, you know, so it's the, it's the proper port of the arcade version. Um, but yeah, he's, he's, and it's like I was talking to him this morning about it, you know, we was, I was saying, you know, when I was a kid, back in dinosaur times, <laughs> there was no internet. You know, we had three, three channels of, on the TV. Um, uh, what did we have? CFAX and what was the other one? CFAX and uh, whatever it was. And it was like a, it was like a very blocky texting screen. You couldn't send text, but it was like information and you could put in a search and, but it wasn't the internet. I suppose it was the predecessor to the internet. Um, but you had to have a, a, a telly what uh, was compatible with that service. Um, but yeah, no internet. Um, so you had to go to libraries, you know, books, paper. <laughs> and, no smartphones, no, nothing like that. Uh, and the only way we found out about games and stuff, technology, was either watching Tomorrow's World on the telly, uh, what was, was great fun, because half of the gadgets I showed you never worked. <laughs> or, the, you know, it did work, but not in the way they wanted it to. Um, Oh, as I say, you got games in magazines, you know, you, you've got to know about your games through magazines and demo types and stuff, you know. Right, I, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to call it quits here. All right, guys, right, thanks for watching and uh, reminiscing with me and allow me to babble without you stopping the video unless you've already stopped the video and gone on to watch something else when well, that's cool um, but yeah thanks for watching thanks for liking subscribing and all those wonderful things uh, live long and prosper and may the force be with you and i'll catch you next time cheers guys see you all soon